Today we welcome uh, Chris Michaels, who is going to share a little bit about her continuing journey of living with mental illness. Sharing these stories are helpful because it removes the stigma and maybe it will help another person or another family on their journey with mental illness. Chris will be briefly using the word suicide and sexual assault, but not describing the scenarios. Just in case that might be a trigger for someone, we wanted to let you know. Do what you need to take care of yourself. Let's have a word of prayer. Gracious God, I am so grateful for Chris's courage in sharing with our congregation and our folks online her story so it can make a difference for someone else's life. And I am so grateful how you have watched over her in this journey and continue to do so. So be with her in her words and in her sharing and bless our time together. Amen. Chris, where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in a small town and then when I was seven we moved to um, Waukesha. I went to South High School in Waukesha and then continued my education at Car Carroll College. Okay, so then you moved to the Falls. Yes, when um, after my divorce I moved to the Falls because it was closer to my work. Okay, and you've been a member here for? 12 years. 12 years. Um, what have you been involved with here at Holy Cross? Um, I'm part of the Healing Network, and I also have been to numerous of the women's retreats. Okay, cool. So let's turn to your journey. Um, when you were young, was your illness uh, identified? There was a lot in my fa um, family system, so it really wasn't recognized until I came to Waukesha. Okay. And then people started saying that something might be wrong. All right. So um, when did you finally get some help then when you were in Waukesha? Um, well, after my first suicide attempt at age 11, I got to see some psychiatrists and they, put me, they diagnosed me with depression and they put me on medication. Okay. Um, gee, at 11, how was school for you? Um, I was, it wasn't very good, um, very good. I was bullied, I was an introvert, it was hard to concentrate, but uh, the other thing is I did do well academically anyway, so my home was pretty much chaos. So it gave me something structured and then I could con Well, and, not, and I'm not surprised that you didn't do well at school because I know you are crazy smart because <laughs> you have corrected me numerous times on my sermon and you've always been right. <laughs> How old were you when you were diagnosed? 45. So it took from 12 years old till you were 45 years old. Correct. To get the right diagnosis, which really helped. Yes. Okay. Did you uh, feel relief at that diagnosis? I felt I felt some um, I felt some relief and at least pinpointed some of my problems. Um, and. Uh, Experiencing some of the abuse that you had had and some of the, your symptoms became more apparent mm -hmm. and some of those kinds of things. Um, how did that background of uh, some of those times of terror mm -hmm. uh, affect your healing ultimately? There was one thing I remembered the, when I was five years old and that was, um, that was Jesus, um, the Sunday school thing, Jesus loves me, this I know. And that kept me through. And then finally, um, and then one day I said, well, I haven't tried prayer, let's try that. Um, and so I prayed and um, prayed. And then about a few minutes later, one of my abusers came, um, said that she was moving. And about mm. two weeks later, about two weeks later, because somebody, because my neighbor said something to my um, mom, my second abuser got arrested. Okay. So has medication always been the same, or have you tried different meds? No, it's been, um, it's been a journey with medication. Um, not every medication works with everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Plus, um, when you are, um, medication sometimes don't work as you grow older, go through certain um, life events, so, yeah, mm -hmm. they have to Things be adjusted at very, at various stages, ages, yeah. yes. Um, and so 
How old were you when you were diagnosed with ADHD? I was 57 years old. 57? Yes. And um, how would you describe ADHD for people who may not be familiar with that? Well, bipolar is a mood disorder. Um, ADHD is neuro, um, cognitive, neurodivergent, is in, um, they call it neuro, neurodivergent. Dyslexia, dyscalculia, meaning you say, you see numbers different, um, differently. Um, and um, then the, also the autism spectrum is on there. Okay, so it's all about how you receive and process information. Correct. Which we see in autism or in the other things that you describe. Um, you have shared with me that people diagnosed with bipolar are often creative. Yes, they, um, yes, they are. Um, they have um, about 80, per according to the National, um, National Institute on Health, about 80% of all creative writers are bipolar. Hmm. And then um, what about compulsive, obsessive compulsive behavior? Um, that is, can be part of ADHD, um, about 20% have that with um, their ADHD. And then it's very interesting to me that you said that 33, according to the NIH, that 33% of people living with bipolar could also be ADHD, have that secondary Correct. diagnosis. Yes. So very interesting. Um, so it, although you are a very creative person, it took you another 12 years to get that ADHD diagnosis. Yeah. And you said it made such a difference. Yes, um, I could concentrate. That it was actually what le led me to the healing network where I could feel like I could volunteer more. I could pay attention to people. A lot of times people would think that I wasn't paying attention to them or I would interrupt during conversations. Physically, it affected you too, right? Right. right. Um, now that I could concentrate, I lost 100 pounds. 100 pounds, wow. During COVID. So <laughs> it affected you in all different kinds of ways. Correct. What are some people, who are some people that we might recognize um, or at least younger people might recognize that are bipolar? Okay, um, um, bipolar would be Mariah Carey, Kanye West, Mel Gibson, um, Jane Pauley, um, and Jim Carrey actually has a dual diagnosis uh, like being a bipolar and um, ADHD. And you also mentioned Catherine Zeta-Jones as Zeta a very Drone. successful yeah. actress. Yes. Yeah. And um, you said that uh, some are ADHD in addition, like Jim Carrey. Yes. And so you said Kevin... Kevin Hart. And um, Kevin Hart has ADHD. Um, t Justin Timberlake, and Howie Mandel, Mandel yes. Um, so many creative people mm -hmm. um, have some of these challenges, but have risen above and have been able to utilize uh, through medication, mm -hmm. through talk therapy, but have been able to have some pretty successful yeah. and lives. We yeah. don't know what their personal life is all the right. time, but um, I'm sure it's been a journey for each and every one of them as well. Um, how does your diagnosis play a part in your daily life? I've learned to find coping mechanisms through um, you two and that to remain organized, to break things down into um, bits that I can understand. And you um, wrote me an email at four in the morning. So you mentioned that insomnia is also a uh, part of yeah, and your some, journey. Yeah, both with bipolar and AD, ADHD. And that music helps you concentrate. Yes, it does. Um, yes, it does. It puts things, I think it helps anybody with um, a um, neurodivergent. Um, it just helps put everything into a beat, basically. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, um, how about your journey at work and friendships and things? Well, I, um, well, my relationship with my um, ex-husband, I think was, um, I know was affected very much by my bipolar and the ADHD. Um, that probably, that's one of the reasons we got divorced. Um, the other, but he also had his own mental health issues. So, um, and then- How about for work? For work? Um, basically, I couldn't, con uh, even though when I did learn, 
eventually how to do the job. It, did, it takes me a little longer to learn how to do a um, job. I did do it well with the office work, but then, um, when, um, but then I switched um, positions and because I couldn't concentrate and the, it, I wound up being um, fired from my last two jobs. So it's not the intellectual part of doing the job, no. it's more the social networking and the settings. And the and, organization. And yeah. the organization that's a challenge. Yes. Um, how about NAMI, how the National In uh, Association of Mental Illness, how has our local NAMI chapter been helpful? It's show me, um, it show me groups that we can, um, that we can go to, um, to understand. Um, there is a group at Freight Art Memorial on Tuesday nights at seven. Um, the, it's, um, and it just breaks things down um, for me to, um, to understand my uh, mental illness and to get help with. And how about insurance? We hear a lot about that. How did that hinder your journey or help? Well, unfortunately, um, mental health um, is not looked at as, as, as important as um, physical health with the insurance companies. There's usually a, they cover less of mental, um, mental health um, coverage and the medicines sometimes are not um, covered. So you really have to be diligent and look, um, look up what is covered and what isn't, what networks you can work with. And that's hard when you're already feeling like being organized is right. hard to try to get the coverage that um, you could maybe receiving. Right. So it's a it can be a real stumbling block. That's why I believe in advocacy to have somebody help you because you might not be in the position in your mind to work with this. So mm -hmm. um, we also talked about the shortage of psychiatrists and psychiatric nurses right. and psych psychiatric yeah. physician assistants and therapists there's a we're yeah. experiencing Wisconsin. a real shortage yeah and actually that's national yeah. nationwide i think it is nationwide because it's a lot of schooling beyond just the regular medical right. medical yeah. degree how has your faith helped you through the trauma you have experienced in life you talked about um remembering mm -hmm. jesus loves me this i know mm -hmm. um and then prayers being answered right um, you also talked about that neighbor. Can you just remind us what that neighbor did that well, virtually saved your life? The, um, what that neighbor did is um, she, ta um, she told my mother um, that there was something wrong and what she thought it was. And um, my mom um, faced the um, abuser and um, got help, basically. Wonderful. So sometimes, even though we kind of feel like we don't want to be nosy there are times that we need to speak up our concern yes. and in your case um it was a lifesaver the other thing is is that with my bipolar journey there um with my bipolar journey it's sometimes um when i was in a depressive state i thought there was no god when i was in a manic state i thought i was god wow that's a, that shows the, 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 the emotional upheaval yes. that there was no God to that you were God. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. thank you for sharing that. I'm really excited to say that Holy Cross is going to offer a NAMI class this summer uh, from July 10th to August 28th, eight weeks. It's called Family to Family, and it's for family members with adult children who are dealing with mental illness. We've offered it a few other times before. I highly encourage you to invite people you know and to check it out because it's non-threatening, but it offers the help that is so important to know and be aware of. It's on Monday nights as well. So um, how has faith sustained you? Um, well, I still remember my um, Bible verse, <laughs> um, my life verse when I was in confirmation. It's Isaiah 7, 9, and it says, if your faith is not enduring, you shall not endure. Okay, all from those years. Have you ever felt unwelcome at Holy Cross? No, I've never felt unwelcome, but very few people know, know that I have bipolar and ADHD um, till now. And, um, but I've never really felt... Good. Well, excluded. 
That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Um, you said that you have a song that describes your treatment, your journey in life. Yes, um, it's a song by Johnny Nash. It's um, I can see clearly now. The pain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Wow, that is a powerful uh, image of your journey. That's that's really cool. Um, what are some? I know there's some other things you want to share with the congregation. So. Um, I'm just going to assist, you got your page there, what some of the things you wanted to share. If you think you have some kind of mental illness or um, su um, suicide ideation, please get help. Don't isolate. Okay. If, yeah, um, if you have someone, w if you know someone with a mental illness, be an advocate. They might not be the best frame in mind to seek help. Sometimes um, as you... Uh, an advocate needs to make that phone call and then because um, sometimes people are so depressed or right. whatever they can't even pick up right. the phone right okay and then if you see old behaviors in somebody who has been diagnosed with uh, diagnosed and on medication it's important to encourage them to check in with their doctor perhaps they need a new medication okay yeah because sometimes people can like you say, grow Flat. out of it, right. something else biological in the body might mm -hmm. change it. Mm -hmm. And then um, a little bit, and then the one thing I want to tell people is that a little bit of cra um, crazy is a good thing. There wouldn't be any art, adventure, music, profound books. Even Jesus was a little bit of crazy, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and some phone numbers? Okay, yes, the National Suicide um, and mental health crisis line is just 988. That's all you have to dial, and it will get you to um, to someone in the mental health field, and they will usually um, take you to the um, NAMI office in your local area, and it is 24-7. Or you can text 174-174. Okay. And it's important to know that um, our freighter uh, up at our clinic here at our hospital um, that there is a clinic for mental health, uh, for people that are experiencing mental health crises, um, and that you can just go to the ER and they will assist you to get the help that you need. So in closing, what do you celebrate about Chris today? I celebrate that after four suicide attempts, I'm still here by the grace of God. And I'm smart, I'm creative, I accepting of all people, and, um, May f um, faith has gotten through me in some very tough times. And oh, oh yeah, I'm a little bit of good crazy. You know? <laughs> good, good. Well, thank you, Chris, for sharing. And God bless you in your continued journey. And um, this uh, touched all of us. And a little bit of crazy, good crazy is okay. So right. God bless you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you.